Lisa? Daddy got your cake. Yay! Thanks, Daddy. Can I see it? Today is our four-year-old daughter's birthday. Even my often swamped husband made it home early. So we're having a birthday celebration as a family. But as Lisa excitedly opened the box, she burst into tears. The next moment, she suddenly starts crying. This isn't for me. What? I take a closer look at the tasty strawberry cake especially the chocolate plate on top. To my surprise, another girl's name is on it. What happened here? I shot Brian a puzzled look, but he's visibly thrown off. My name is Erin, a 33-year-old working mom. I work at City Hall. I've always been in a hectic department, and have been a diligent worker. Before I realized I was in my late twenties without a boyfriend. That's when I decided to sign up with a matchmaking agency. There I met Brian, who later became my husband. Brian is a corporate guy at a big company. From our first interaction, he was sweet to me, and he was a true gentleman on our dates. I quickly fell head over heels for him. Soon after, we started dating, and a year later, we got engaged. Both our families were thrilled for us, and we had our wedding and got our marriage certificate. That evening, he said to me, Aaron, let's start a happy family together. Yeah, I love that. How many kids are you thinking? Whoa, jumping the gun there. But definitely two. I want a household filled with laughter. Sounds like a plan. About six months into our marriage, I discovered I was pregnant. He was ecstatic and stood by me throughout the pregnancy. Eventually, I gave birth to our first daughter, Lisa. Both our families were over the moon about Lisa. In that moment, I felt on top of the world. Both our folks live quite a distance from us, so we decided to raise Lisa by ourselves. I took maternity leave, but he couldn't because of his job. But this proved to be tougher than we anticipated. Lisa would often cry at night and was pretty demanding. She'd calm down when held, but would wail the second she was set down. I ended up cradling her nearly nonstop. While my husband started off helping with our baby, he slowly backed off. He even got to where he'd say, She's too noisy. Can you get her to stop? Babies cry. I'm doing my best here. I replied as I comforted Lisa, but he remained upset. I have work in the morning. I need some sleep. I haven't slept properly in days. Can you pitch in every now and then? Why? I'm working all day. But she's our daughter. He didn't let me finish. Just sighed loudly and left the room. I had read in parenting articles that it's common for couples to clash when dealing with a new baby. I foolishly thought we'd be the exception. I never dreamed our relationship would get this tense. While dealing with our relationship issues, I faced the immediate challenges of motherhood. A year after her birth, Lisa was still a handful at night, and I was close to my wit's end. While I absolutely adore her, the sleep deprivation and lack of personal time wore me out. 
Brian barely chipped in with Lisa, leaving me to shoulder most of the parenting. After two years of maternity leave, I came to a decision. I think I'll head to my parents for a bit with Lisa, I told Brian. My mom had recently retired and was available. And rather than her traveling to us, I thought I'd take Lisa and stay with my parents for a few months. He looked almost relieved when I told him. That's a great idea. If your mom's willing to help, that's a weight off. Go ahead, he said without any hint of missing either Lisa or me. Yeah, I'll keep you posted about her through emails. You'll be by yourself. Are you good with that? I lived on my own for a while, so I'll be okay. Just go and enjoy your time with your folks. Thanks. With that, I chose to head back to my parents' place for three months with my one-year-old daughter. Honestly, staying at my parents' was pretty relaxing. With them helping out, I could catch up on sleep and even have some me time. It felt so good to finally sip tea at a coffee shop after what felt like forever. Lisa began to smile more, and her nighttime crying gradually decreased. This was a much needed break for me. While at my parents, I often sent Ryan pictures of Lisa. He didn't always respond, but when he did, he'd mention how adorable she looked, which comforted me. After the three months stay, I felt refreshed and more confident in taking care of Lisa. I couldn't wait to see Brian. With that excitement, I headed home. As I had hoped, Brian welcomed us with a smile, saying, Good to have you back. He seemed more rested too. Over dinner, we discussed how Lisa had been doing over the past few months. Then something stood out to me. Where's your wedding ring? He'd always worn the band we got when we married. But now, it was gone. Well, the thing is, I lost it. He confessed, looking uneasy. I replied, taken aback. Really? Should we get you a new one? No, we'll have childcare expenses. We're still married. Ring or no ring. Is that okay? Yeah, I suppose. These things happen. After that, he never wore his wedding ring again. Around the time I got back from my parents, he began claiming work had ramped up and he was seldom home. He put in extra hours almost every weekday and often went out on weekends for work. He didn't pitch in with housework or childcare, leaving all of it to me. Yet through all the chaos, I never questioned him. Time sped up, and soon Lisa was nearing her fourth birthday. She can now recognize the alphabet, and has become quite the talkative and bubbly kid. I reminded my perpetually occupied husband. Don't forget, Lisa's birthday. I remember to pick up the cake. He somewhat reluctantly agreed. The day of Lisa's fourth birthday came around. To my astonishment, Brian made it home early, cake in tow. I whipped up a special meal, and we celebrated together. After eating, it was cake time. Lisa, Daddy got you a cake. Yay! Thanks, Daddy. Can I see it? But as Lisa excitedly opened the box, she burst into tears. This isn't for me! What? I glanced at the cake, taken aback. The gorgeous strawberry cake had a chocolate label stating, Happy birthday, Sarah. What happened here? 
I shot Brian a puzzled look. But he's visibly thrown off. Oh, um, maybe the bakery messed up? Yeah, that must be it. Excuse me? They looked swamped. They might have mixed up orders. I'm sorry, Lisa. They messed up your name. Is that what happened? Yeah. I'll talk to them later. Let's eat for now, alright? He tried to explain, but something fell off. A nagging doubt crossed my mind. But he wouldn't. Despite my internal conflict, I served the cake and continue the festivities. Days rolled on, and I couldn't shake that feeling. I prayed. I was overthinking. But I needed to know for sure. So I reached out to a well-known detective agency nearby and used my old savings to have them look into Brian. Three weeks later, the detective agency called me in, and I found myself at a coffee shop. I opened the envelope they handed me and my worst fears, which I somehow known deep down, were confirmed. So this is it. Brian, I'll never forgive you. My hand holding the envelope tight shook with anger. A week later, I left Lisa with a close friend and asked Brian to join me in a private dining room. The excuse was to celebrate our wedding anniversary. Actually, it really was our anniversary. When he showed up a bit late, I gestured for him to sit across from me. Wow, it's been ages since it's been just the two of us for dinner. Here's to our anniversary, he said, trying to keep things light as he raised his wine glass. I responded. Hold on, we need to talk about something first. What's going on? Care to explain this? I spread out photos on the table, which showed him at a family diner with a woman I didn't recognize and a young girl, around five years old. There was also a picture of him going into what looked like their house. What are these? Why do you have them? I hired a detective. This woman is Jennifer. The little girl is Sarah. The same name on the cake for Lisa's birthday. You guys look pretty happy. Almost like a family. What's the deal here? He shifted uncomfortably in his seat. Listen, aren't you jumping to conclusions? Jennifer is my boss's younger sister. Your boss's? Yeah, his sister. You know, she's like a friend. She's a single mom and was having a tough time. So I was just being a listening ear. Given my relationship with my boss, I couldn't just brush her off. He started to make flimsy excuses. I sighed and shot off a quick text to someone. See? You're just getting the wrong idea. The cake mix-up? Sarah's birthday was just around the corner, so I got confused. He kept talking, but then the door to our private room swung open. What the? He looked up, stunned. There, standing in the doorway, was the woman from the photos, Jennifer. Thanks for coming, Jennifer. She nodded slightly and took a seat next to me. When I got the report from the detective, I had also learned about her and decided to reach out. She stared coldly at Brian. So, I'm your boss's sister, huh? That's not our relationship if I remember correctly. You were just listening to me? How could you spin it that way? We were clearly involved. You even stepped in as a father figure for Sarah. She shot Brian a fierce look, and he went pale. Jennifer had been wary when I first approached her as Brian's wife. But as we chatted, she pieced together the truth and was deeply upset. 
apologizing many times. She's a single mom, raising her five-year-old Sarah. Their relationship started when he randomly approached her on the street. When I asked about when they met, it lined up with when I was away and when he started being out more. She had no clue he was married, especially since he never wore a wedding ring. He had been sweet to her and her daughter, even hinting at the possibility of marriage. Brian looked at me, his face pale and filled with panic. We're on to you. Just come clean already. After a bee, he hesitated, then began to talk. He confessed that he felt overlooked as I was so focused on our daughter, Lisa. During a trip I took to my hometown, he had met a gorgeous woman named Jennifer, thinking it'll just be a brief fling. But he'd unintentionally fallen hard for her. Still, he had no plans to leave me and hoped to carry on with his double life. I whispered sharply, Did you really think you could pull that off? My words clearly unnerved him. Jennifer jumped in. Brian, how could you lie to both of us? I could take you to court for pretending to marry me. Take me to court? He blurted out, looking alarmed. She went on. Plus, you lied about where you work. You're at XX Company, aren't you? Well, I mean... You're familiar with Garrett Enterprises, right? Paul Garrett runs it. Huh? He looked totally lost. Yeah, we do business with them. What's that got to do with anything? Did you forget my last name? The guy heading Garrett Enterprises? That's my dad. Turns out he had inadvertently started a relationship with the daughter of a key business associate. I had no clue. There are plenty of Garrett's out there. How was I supposed to know? He muttered. But she wasn't done. My dad's really close to both me and Sarah. When I filled him in on your antics, he was mad. Hope you're ready for what's coming at work. He was dumbstruck. In desperation, he turned to me. Aaron, you wouldn't leave me, would you? I'm Lisa's dad. You're doing well at your job, so you could help me out for a bit. We can still make a go for it, the three of us. Annoyed, I splashed my water in his face. Seriously? We're done. I'll be expecting compensation for your cheating, half of what we own, and child support. Time to pay up and say you're sorry, you jerk. He looked down, whispering, I'm really sorry. In the end, Brian and I split. Just like I said, I demanded he pay for cheating, half of everything we owned, and child support. I took half of our shared apartment and our savings, and he agreed to pay $70,000 for the affair. He also committed to monthly child support payments. Jennifer's influence got him fired. And to make matters worse for him, she also demanded payment, which wiped out his savings. Jobless, without his family, he moved into a rundown apartment and hunted for work. When he did land a job, it only paid about half his previous salary. And given his child support obligations, life was hard. But I had zero pity for him. He brought all this on himself and deserved what he got. Meanwhile, Lisa and I were doing well, and Jennifer became kind of a friend. We sometimes catch up over tea with our kids. I'm excited about what the future holds and watching Lisa grow up.